When I think of the phrase mental health, uh, one word that comes to mind is suffocating. Frustrating. Shame. Ambiguous. Believe. Systematic. Balance. Community. Trauma. Care. Contentment. Friends. Thriving. Growth. Le bien-être général. Resilience. Community. One word that comes to mind when I hear the term mental health is stigma. 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 Failure. We know that according to the 2016 National College Health Assessment, 42% uh, of students had indicated that they had experienced stress to a level that had negatively impacted their academics. 90% of students had indicated at some point in the last 12 months having feelings of exhaustion, and 91% had indicated feeling overwhelmed by all that they had to do. Roughly 2% of our campus population indicated having attempted suicide sometime within the last 12 months, and uh, roughly 15% had had thoughts of suicide. So I've been on campus now for 10 years, and what I've noticed with our First Nations and Métis Inuit learners is that they suffer with a lot of depression, um, alcohol abuse, drug abuse for some, and for many, it may be even suicide. I didn't know what the signs were, and so I went a whole year with just like, pushing through and be like, oh, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And at a certain point, I wasn't fine. Um, and it was really hard to talk about that with my family, let alone people on campus that I was friends with. My first few weeks out here, I spent most of my time with um, other members of the football team. Um, so there's this stereotype of, you know, tough, mean guy that you kind of need to, or you feel like you need to fulfill. So talking about your feelings like that isn't something that a lot of people feel comfortable with um, and feeling like you need to uphold this masculinity and this tough uh, shield of, oh, nothing bothers me, I can do anything. That was challenging. We have people suffering and they are unwell and they are working hard just to get through their days and to get the bare minimum. Uh, from their experience here, just so they can get home at night in, in, in some sort of whole piece. It's even if you're reaching out to these people, sometimes you can kind of question whether or not they'll really be there in the end, and that's just a really haunting feeling. But sometimes we need to take a breath. As an institution, we know mental health was, was ranked as the number one priority that faculty, staff, and students had indicated were of most importance. Society often paints a certain picture of what mental health should look like, and that creates a lot of negative perceptions around mental health and mental illness. It also creates a lot of barriers that stop people from re reaching out for help. I'm the first for my family to be in a Canadian university and to receive an education of this um, status. And I felt like reaching out for help wasn't an option for me initially in, in the sense that I almost felt like no one will understand what I'm going through. As a player on the football team, uh, there's this ideal of this confident, strong, tough person who, you know, does excellent on the field and is a shining example in their community when you gloss over that stuff and disregard the mental health aspect of your experience at university, um, it can be pretty dangerous. Mental health is kind of on a spectrum. So you have some people that have a diagnosis and have a diagnosis with, they have a disorder, a mental health disorder, but you have many people that have no disorder, but somehow they don't have a really good mental health. And so it's about what do you do to increase your well-being? I like to use the word well-being because for a lot of students, they don't have a mental health disorder, but they, they don't have well-being. And what can, to have a plan to increase their well-being. And I think a lot of times we tend to carry on a lot of things that aren't ours. I always say it's like an onion, right? It's like, here's the core of the person the human, but then everything else that comes along with that, and then there's these flimsy little pieces at the end that kind of you could just brush off. But it's the things in between, like the heaviness that make up you, 
a lot of times it's like that heaviness that's there is not for you to carry and it's really hard to unpack that for so many people right it's like i'm carrying a lot of stuff that's not for me either right as a parent as a student as a community member there's many things that we carry but it's how in which you have to start to unpack that so you can just care for yourself too often i think when we talk about mental health and mental illness we let the little things build up and then before you know it it's not just a small thing that you're trying to just sort of inch back onto the tracks you're dealing with something now that is so far off the rails it is a significant struggle it makes a really big difference um, just giving somebody a, a listening ear or smiling or just asking how they're doing I think is really meaningful for people who uh, maybe are struggling while being at school. For students, we should all kind of recognize that our peers, the person who's sitting next to us in class or behind us in lecture, might be going through something that we could never even imagine, but the, maybe just a smile or a hi can go a long way. I think I'll always struggle with certain things or always struggle with certain stressors of my job or of the work I'm doing on campus. The more that I've been able to deal with it head on and just fight my enemies right then and there, uh, I'm able to sort of uh, be more resilient going forward. We're not all mental health professionals, but that doesn't mean we as students, staff or faculty can't contribute to mental wellness here on campus. Unfortunately, I had to um, go through the experience of losing a friend and a classmate to suicide. Having a community of support around you during a time of loss like that it really does make a huge difference. I am a suicide survivor myself, and I was very lucky in my early 20s to figure some of this out and be, to become more well than I was previously. And I am so thankful I was able to address that at a younger period of my life, where I could really then live my life from that point on in a more enriched way. I think I was in a little bit of denial, I'd say. I mean, it's very hard to believe especially when sometimes the signs people give you aren't the signs that you would expect to have such a result as, you know, someone deciding to commit suicide. And yet somehow when we talk about mental health or mental illness, it's seen as something that's talked about in dark corners and is whispered about and is somehow a struggle. So I would love to see that conversation change from one that puts all the onus on the individual, that somehow my success and my failure is, is my responsibility alone, to one that is very much recognizing the importance of community and nobody has to do it alone.